Today, we're gonna to be using these two big slabs of rain tree to make a squircle shaped coffee table. That was a lot tougher than I thought. I originally put these on the jointer. I'm not sure what happened. I think it's because I've got a uh, bench top jointer. It struggles with these heavier slabs, if you want to call them that. Um, I tried the table saw trick, as you just saw. I'm as happy as I'm going to get uh, with that method. So I'm going to glue it up, joint it. We'll see how we go. This is a squircle. I've just rounded off the uh, edges and smoothed the edge. Now I'm gonna take this 60 degree chamfer bit and run it around the outside. Let's do it. New plan. Uh, that big beefy boy of a router bit does not fit in my unbelievably chunky Makita router. Wow. Wow. Uh, so I've put it in my router table. I've taken out the throat plate and uh, we'll give it a whip. Do I need this giant square. No. Does it make me feel like a pretty successful woodworker? Hell yeah. Thank you, Ben from Hue and Awe for pointing this out. Thank you. All right, uh, I've got to design the legs. I've got my square, I've got my bevel gauge. I've got a couple of rulers. I have no idea what these legs are gonna be, but let's go along for the ride. It's montage time. Oh! template for the leg components. I need to make two parts for each component out of the other remaining slab of rain tree. Let's do it.
something like this. At the moment, the legs are way too chunky. They're 50 mil thick. Uh, and for such a small coffee table, I think I really need to slim them down. So I'm going to take them to the table saw and rip them to probably 30 mil thick. And I'll probably do some additional tapering from there. I had the bright idea, I may end up regretting this, uh, to cross the legs like this, which will involve half lapping them into each other. So I've used, I found the dead center of the piece. I'm gonna use my doweling jig to drill a pin into each half so I can swivel them around to mark exactly where I need to cut. This may end up being a disaster. What I'm doing now is just trying to work out what the, the angle in relation to each other is gonna be. I don't want too narrow and I don't want too wide. I'm just trying to eyeball it to be honest. All right, so I've got my two top leg pieces in here. I've got the angle set and I've got two guide blocks, uh, double-sided taped down here. I've got a guide bushing flush trim bit in the trim router and I'm gonna hog away the waist. Plan B. I've maxed out the depth of those guide blocks, all that sort of stuff. I've gone with a router bushing, which will leave a lip at the bottom of the cut, but I can easily clean that up with a chisel or come back with a flush trim bit, top mounted flush trim bit. <laughs> what? It's for Dana, I promise. He's gonna love it. See here. What I'm gonna do now, I believe, will trigger a lot of people. Um, we'll see how we go. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to stain the base with this India ink. I think it'll provide a really nice contrast between the top and the legs. It is such beautiful wood. Rather than covering it up, uh, the ink will allow the wood grain to be still visible. So we'll see how we go.
I've just drilled four holes for the figure eight clips. We're gonna put these on, flip it over and attach it to the top just to see what it looks like. Woodworking is a lot of nitrile gloves. This project is a wrap. It turned out beautifully, sanded to 800 grit. I love the leg profile underneath. I think the customer is going to be really happy. Please like this video and leave a comment below what you would have done differently for this build. Thank you.